The big dry didn't just break at Bathurst today, it pelted Mount Panorama with rain. Not that fans seem to mind. I'm a speed freak. I've been doing it now for several years. This is the, the wettest I can remember. Even before the race, slippery conditions nearly ended Wayne Gardner's hopes. We had snow there on Tuesday. It was hot as blazes yesterday, and here it is rain. Still, still, that's Bathurst. Freezing! I'm so cold. Trackside attractions kept some of the fans amused. A warm there. Others responded to the thrill of the sport with a little amateur rally driving. <laughs> Higher still on the mountain, diehard showed their colours. This year, the honour of playing the national anthem went to self-confessed petrolhead James Morrison. Yeah, yeah, I figured there's got to be a way I can get out onto the track with this, <laughs> if not with a car. Thursday's tragedy wasn't forgotten, the race chaplain making a dedication to the family of the late Don Watson. With rain still pelting down, drivers acknowledge the risk. The uh, margin of uh, error is reduced from a zero and uh, uh, going to make a hell, of a, uh, a hell of a different race out of it. Take your time. But not much. Somehow, Gardner's team rebuilt the front end. With just minutes now to the start of the race, you can actually feel the adrenaline rise, both here in Pit Lane and amongst the thousands who have gathered to watch what many consider to be the greatest touring car race in Australia. Start your engines. With the greasy track, leaders change regularly. There was a flurry of near misses. And for Peter Brock, a spectacular exit. In the end, Dick Johnson was once again king of the mountain. Kay Brown, 7 Nightly News. Well, of all the... The gloom which smothered the mountain had the adrenaline pumping even faster on the start line. All-knowing disaster was just a slip away. But Alan Jones is away smarter even on the outside and gobbles up Tony Longhurst as they reach the first turn. Is it going to be Brock? He goes in wide, but he won't be able to turn it out of there. And it'll From be pole position, Glenn Seaton just managed to hold off Peter Brock on the first corner, but by the top of Mountain Straight, Mark Scaife was the leader. It was like a lake across the top, but no one was easing off the acceleration. Accelerator. Brock sneaking through on lap three. And Brock goes through to take the lead in the 94 great race with it sideways out of the turn. Then it was Perkins sobering up the fans as he took to Brock as if it was a five lap sprint. Play there sideways, full power, trying to get about 550 to the tarmac. Still very slippery conditions out there. His aggression paid off after just six laps. Hard under brakes as they come up the shelf. It looks like he's got him. Yes, he has. Behind, a slower car almost oh, ended the day for shot. Brock and Seaton. And as the rain again pelted down, conditions were shocking. A flat tyre, the beginning of the end for Scaife. The drivers were calling for a pace car to avert disaster. Among them, Wayne Gardner. Any messages? <laughs> Help! Soon after, Gardner touched fenders to send Crick into the grass. As the track dried, the race had its eighth leader, Queenslander Dick Johnson, while others made the most of the sunshine to head to the beach. Some were simply frustrated and left climbing the walls. After 100 laps, Johnson was clearly the man to catch, although Perkins, Brock and Longhurst joined forces in pursuit. With Glenn Seaton's car retired, the big names continued to fall, Gardner finding the wall for the second time. The car of Brad Jones and 20-year-old Craig Lowndes briefly grabbed the lead, but with bow in the seat for Johnson, the Ford again took control, while Brock's dream of a 10th title was shattered. Left to wait for a lift back down the mountain, he watched the field bunch up behind the pace car, the Bathurst rookie Lowndes sneaking outside bow. He's put one on him up the hill, I didn't think it was possible. Dick was understandably worried as Lowndes and Bow engaged in a dogfight. They both locked the inside left tire. The experience of Bow getting the Falcon home for the first time since 1981, much to the relief of Johnson. Dick Johnson is absolutely jubilant as you'd expect. I'd just like to congratulate Bradley James and Craig Lowndes. They did absolutely a magnificent job. It was a great contest. Warren Sim, seven nightly.